Good day to everybody. Welcome back. If this is your first time here, just welcome. Glad you guys are here. I know I'm glad to be here. Uh, what we got is a 2011 Ford F-150. And uh, the customer states that the AC stops working, like it freezes up. Uh, they notice some frost on the lines or something like that. Uh, that shouldn't be too hard to recreate considering that it's January and it's uh, cold outside. Cold being a relative term, of course. Uh, today it's uh, 63 degrees. Uh, I understand up north it's like negative 700. So uh, sorry for you guys. I, 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 I know that's unfortunate for everybody uh, living in the cold right now. And I, I don't mean to gloat being in, uh, in sunny Florida, but, um, but yeah, it's nice outside. Anyway, I'm, I'm done poking fun at everybody who's uh, freezing their lug nuts off right now. So uh, let's get straight to it. I'm gonna bring this sound in, uh, get the AC machine hooked up to it, uh, fire up the uh, climate control system full blast, and we're gonna see what this thing does. Um, I understand that the concern is intermittent and uh, it may not uh, present itself, but uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try really hard to uh, get this thing to freeze up or at least get it to, to do something that they say it's doing so I can uh, properly diagnose it and repair their concern. Powering down. And let's see, we've also got 170,000 miles on the Odom. Well, I kind of got ahead of myself. I don't know why I powered it down. It needs to be running so I can uh, evaluate the AC. Dirt, dirt, dirt. Popping in the hood. All right, let's see. The uh, compressor is in fact compressing down there. This is good. Pull the caps off. Efficiency. Click. Okay, there we go. Click. Okay, pressures are looking okay. So far, so good. Maybe, maybe a little high. I'll check the chart. Um, one thing I am noticing here is that my fans are not running. Uh, I do believe they should be since the AC is commanded on. Uh, maybe I'll uh, I'll check these guys for power real quick, just to make sure they're not being commanded on and uh, and failing to actuate. Uh, now I'm on the driver's side fan right now. That's our main power and ground to the fan motor. Let's check that with the meter and uh, verify that we do in fact have power and ground here. DC voltage, yes. Hmm, crustiness. Okay, the meter is operating, this is good. Let's go check the fan. Okay, I've got the uh, power in the ground probes uh, on the connector for one of the cooling fans. Uh, it does not have voltage, uh, meaning one of two things. Either the fan control module is not giving it voltage or it's not being commanded on just yet. Now, seeing as how the system is cold, the cooling system is cold, it may not be requiring uh, cooling fans at this time. So I can circle back to that later if I get stumped. Uh, let's let it all come up to operating temperature first before we uh, think about condemning fans. In the meantime, let's revisit pressures. We're still looking good. They came down. That one kind of came up some. The compressor is still running, so there's enough refrigerant in the system to command it on. Let's go inside, check the thermal meter, and see what kind of uh, temperatures the system is making. Okay, 80 degrees, not too good. That's, I should see something in the 40s, especially on a day like today. Show, let us uh, recover what refrigerant is in there and see how much is left. Perhaps there's a leak. Recover. Do not save. Recover. Recover again. Do not save. Yeah, 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 I did that, okay. Here, while we wait, spray some cleaner on here because I disapprove of uh, filthy, dirty battery terminals. 
Now when this is all done, I'll hose it off with some brake clean and wipe it down. Uh, that should give you trolls in the comment section enough to uh, re about because I used brake clean. I'm here for you. And, and seriously, I, I mean that. You guys are very inspirational. Re. Hmm, there's a bolt missing. I'm gonna replace that. Let's see if I've got something here. Maybe, ooh, this one, this one will fit. Do, 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 do. Click. There, it's like it never happened. All right, so the placard under the hood tells me our specified amount is 1.5 pounds of refrigerant. And we're coming up just over one pound right here. So it, it appears to be a bit low, but we won't jump the gun. Let's let it finish first. <laughs> so I was, uh, I was watching one of uh, South Main Auto Channel's videos the other day, and uh, his phone rang in the background, and I'm sitting on my chair on my patio with my laptop, and I started saying doo 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 to myself, and I was like, wait, this is the wrong video, wrong video. So naturally, I had to jump into the comment section. And Eric, I hope you see it, buddy. So I've got a few more minutes of recovery to happen here, so I'll take this opportunity to uh, do some scrubbing action on all this crusties, just to make it nice and shiny. Taking care to not short the circuit with the wire brush like against the frame. Yeah, that's a real thing. It turns these into like fireball sticks. Not good. Much more better. -er. All right, I'm in for some re now. I don't have any parts cleaner because I used it all on a rear end. So I'm just gonna rinse this off with some blue water. Can't do that, ruin the battery. There we go. Nice and shiny. Good. Uh, it's got a blinker fluid leak. Okay, dokes. Well, the machine is finished and it, uh, it has recovered 1.629 pounds. Uh, which is technically an overcharge. Um, I think what I'll do is install the proper charge into this and uh, we'll recheck the system. It, it should have been performing okay even with a slight overcharge, but uh, you never know, these things can be sensitive. Zero, one, five, begin process. Okay, that is done. Let's uh, restart the system. Fire it up. And AC on, recirc on, yes. We're set to maximum coldness. Let's see what happens here. Now again, the compressor is running. You see the clutch is engaged. And our, uh, our low side is actually quite high, 65, 66 pounds. Yeah, I wanna see this down in, in the 40 to 50 zone tops that's a little high okay and we see some fluctuation here on the high side see the needle jumping this leads me to suspect that this uh, thermal expansion valve or txv may be in the stuck open position and is not providing adequate restriction to uh to induce the heat transfer yeah low sides up to what 74 72 that's that's way way too high for cooling it's not gonna work not gonna work at all i'll take another reading over here at the lines by the service port and again we see a similar condition both lines are roughly the same temperature 84 degrees and 91 degrees okay i do believe we should uh, replace this uh, txv right here and it will reevaluate the system afterwards. Uh, now, full disclosure, I must uh, reveal that about a year ago, um, my particular company replaced this compressor. I think they put a condenser in it too. I, I haven't checked the, the work order, but this is what I was briefed on. 
Oddly enough, I still don't have any radiator fan action. Perhaps they're not being commanded on right now for two reasons. One, the actual engine coolant temp is too low to command these on. And at number two, the AC pressures and or temperatures are uh, not within range to have the PCM command those on. Uh, like I said, I'm just gonna let this run and we're gonna make sure that these things power up before I, uh, I do any kind of final diagnosis on this. Uh, in the meantime, I do believe I am gonna go ahead and order a TXD. Uh, we're gonna toss that guy in, recharge the system of course, and then we'll see if we get a better pressure differential between high and low with a replacement thermal expansion valve. So let's go ahead and recover this again. And recover! Begin recovery now. Okay, I went ahead and ordered a uh, new expansion valve. I'm gonna go ahead and crank up the heat on this because they also mentioned that sometimes it doesn't have heat. Um, I don't know about that, I'm already feeling it. But uh, let's just fire up the heater and find out. While we're waiting for this thing to boil me alive, which it's about to do with 120 degree air, uh, I'd like to apologize if anybody picks up on any hoarseness or uh, raspiness in my voice had kind of a head, whole, head cold kind of thing going on over the weekend. I think it was actually worse than I thought it was gonna be because I slept for um, about 20 hours straight at one point. Uh, I don't think it's the Omegatron or whatever they call it now, but uh, I'm not gonna go find out either because I I'm, I'm, think I'm almost over it. In fact, I think everybody's over the Omegatron, a, a Megalon or Megalodon uh, or Oh, Metacron or whatever they call it. Now. Everybody's over over the hysteria at this point because it's a new year and we're not going to do this year what we did last year. I don't think anybody's on board with that. Except for maybe the Australian government. But they haven't gotten the memo yet. And just like that, banned from YouTube, demonetized for eternity. See what I just did? Now I'm in trouble. Okay, now that I'm done babbling about the Omega Digitron virus or whatever, uh, we can see here that... Uh, we're making 150 degree air with the heater on. So I, I do not believe this thing has a heating problem. Um, the customer mentioned something about that, but uh, that's unconfirmed at this time. Maybe he was trying to run the heat with the engine still cold, uh, but I'll, I'll revisit that with him later. Right now, I'm just gonna focus on the, uh, the AC problem. So that being said, we're in limbo until parts show up. So let's go ahead and Oh, you know what? I'm not going to shut this down. No, 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 no. I want to see if those fans run. So I'm going to let this thing sit here and burn gas uh, until maximum heat saturation has taken place. And then I'll go back over there and check those cooling fans. All right, let's get back in there and get this uh, little unit removed. If I can reach it. Can I reach? Sure, I can. Ooh, aha. There it is. You know, I knew, I knew when I put this bolt in right here, I was shooting myself in the foot because now I need to remove it to uh, get this line off of the expansion valve. Silly rabbit. And yet again, I proved that no good deed goes unpunished. That goes right there. Okay. Now I've got two Torx fasteners right there and right there. I remove those guys and then this valve will come out of its home. We can throw a new one in there. I do believe those are a Torx 27. And if they're not, I'm going to find out real quick. Like, that's not going to reach. I need to extend it. It actually probably will reach, but kind of being lazy. Someone's angry. I heard a potty mouth. Do 
two parsoners. And we'll just give this a good little tuggy tug. And she should come right out. Uh oh. It's disobeying me. There. Oh, that looks like crap. Yeah, those seals are garbage. Uh, oh, I see some, uh, some crusty black stuff inside of there. It's not good. Look at that. That's compressor material. Uh oh. That's uh, that's not good at all. Oh yeah, this thing's totally stuck. Put all that build up in there. Yep. Okay. Let's go over here for a better view. Yeah, do you guys see all that? Let's, uh, let's run some air through this just to make sure it's not restricted. I believe it's blowing. Let me, let me stick my fingers on there. Find out. Yeah, I, I, I do feel some pressure. Well, I don't know. Back flush it. It's not good. Oh, whoa, I just noticed something not good. Look, my battery's broken. How did this happen? Wow. Did it get run over? Someone ran this over. Yeah, that didn't break by accident. Yeah, okay. Well, it still works. Alright, I need to power this down because it's time to get serious. I'm going to run some flush through that uh, evaporator to make sure it's got flow. Alright, got a bottle of AC flush stuff here. What I'm going to do is pull some out with this suctioning device. And then I'll pump it into the evaporator and blow it out with compressed air. I'll go in through the suction side first because that's on top. Fire. This stuff's not flammable. Hmm. It's not uh, working as I had intended. Actually, this might work better than what I had intended. It did make it all the way through. Let's get some more. Oh yeah, look at that black nasty stuff coming out. It's under pressure. And back flush. I'm gonna let that soak for a while. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I have filled up my schmoo shooter. Let's uh, 
try to flush this thing one more time. Just get some more of the cleaner in there. The reason I pull it out and shove it back in is I'm trying to uh, break free any buildup that might be inside in the, the back and forth motion that tends to work out any restrictions that might be in the system. Alright, we're good to go here. It's as clean as it's going to get, I think. Okay, let's give it one last blasting. Ow, hot. So again, while being in this deep, I want to blast both holes uh, just to make sure that any foreign debris that may be lodged on the inside gets broken up and removed. Let's get that O-ring out of there, that's nasty too. I can't reach that one, I'll get a tool. Now, oh gravity, parts gravity. Okay, so seeing as how we found uh, all that compressor material debris inside of this unit, I have no choice uh, but to replace the compressor and the condenser in this truck. Uh, although the compressor was compressing, this right here, this black stuff, is compressor material, which means that that unit is in fact failing and uh, must be replaced now. Uh, fortunately, this entire job is covered under warranty and the consumer will not have to pay for any of it. And that's fantastic. <laughs>